just quickly about myself. Uh, my name is Victor. I work at a company called Confluent. How many of you heard about Confluent before? How many of you heard about Kafka? OK, fantastic. Uh, awesome crowd. Um, I work there as a developer advocate. As a developer advocate, I travel the world, talk to developers. Sometimes I'm building application that demos that actually work, um, hopefully today. Sometimes I just want to listen how the people struggle with their applications. Sometimes I just get offer, I don't know, just a hug. Maybe if I can help technically, I can at least uh, help um, uh, to absorb their pain. Yeah, so this is uh, the part of my job to talk to people. Uh, this is why I'm enjoying uh, the, doing this kind of conferences and really cool stuff that we do in is actual office hours where we can talk about things that care, that you care, not I'm presenting and stuff. All right, some of the things that I will be talking today maybe look odd, weird and stuff, but like Mark McFly said, you might be not in the centers right now, but your kid's gonna love it. So we're gonna be talking about, uh, about KSQL, which is a um, streaming SQL for Apache Kafka. Um, it is a um, development of the KSQL sponsored by Confluent. Development happens in open, so you can go in the GitHub, you can find the source code there. Um, you can see the, what, what is going on there. But before you do that, my goal is you to involve in this kind of process. Before you do that, I want to do introduction, um, and I will talk about some of the things that we do with KSQL, or you can do with KSQL. I'll show what I can do with KSQL. So this is why we need to use a, well, we need to use a Twitter and uh, your tweets. Uh, if you don't know um, hashtags, it's conveniently placed on every slide. Uh, also follow me there, follow Confluent if you're interested in any type of uh, streaming data story. All right, quick 101 on stream processing. Uh, stream processing is the processing of stream of events. So what is an event? Event, it's a, I like this description, it's a shared narrative to describe business. Um, but essentially it's just a something that happened. And uh, usually uh, this is something that happened and you cannot change this and it happened somewhere in the past, you captured this and uh, this something has happened in a certain order. So what is something? It, kind of, it can be some sort of event that happens on your customer support portal, like someone filed a ticket, so it will create the event that ticket created. Or someone uh, that uh, rated your product and said, hey, I really love this, I don't know, like shoes, whatever. Uh, and this just creates the event, like a rated, created or something like that. Um, the sale, it happened. Someone is paid for something, it will create another event. That sale happened that we can derive some other events. For example, you will trigger some workflow that will be starting fulfilling your order, or some other workflow that will be starting preparing like shipping labor, or so far and so on, some other stuff. Um, very uh, popular use case for streaming data is data that reads from the sensors. And uh, the sensors data, IoT data, is also consists of certain events. Temperature went up, temperature went down, um, like pressure went up and down, some other things that might happen um, within the, this particular domain. So certain readings is also, it's also event. This is also type of event that might happen. Who can tell me what is this? Okay, I'll give you a pointer, apart from the Arnold Schwarzenegger being his best in his young, what he's carrying? Log, log, log shipping, <laughs> log aggregation, log shipping, I like this. Um, so essentially the way how the people start applying this all thing streaming, uh, they start streaming the log files from their web servers. Oh, hi Vadim. So all this stuff that comes through the log HTTP or some other systems also come as a set of events. Usually these events are um, ordered by time and you know exactly when something has happened. So interesting point here. There is an analogy between actual log application log and the data structure that we use to store this data. It's also called log and it probably it's the I don't know, maybe it's the second important data structure that any data engineer needs to know. Um, in my opinion, another one would be hash map, because it's basically if you know how to, how to implement hash map, you know how to implement pretty much any database. And um, probably B3. Um, and apart from the being this like a very uh, common interview question when you're going into states and uh, uh, the, the officer as uh, the customers will ask you, oh, what's your occupation? You're a programmer. Okay, what's the B tree? Can you walk through uh, B tree for me? If not, if you lie, you maybe be in trouble. So this is why it's very important to know data structure 
especially if you uh, software engineer or data engineer. So log is a data structure that all the records are actually um, ordered by time, somehow ordered by time. There's some sequence. You cannot change those events. So you cannot change those records. And um, the way how you can deal with this data, you're always reading data and writing data continuously. So you're reading from the uh, beginning of the file, you're writing to the end of the file or to the end of the log. Same thing as you do with application log. So now you know what Apache Kafka is. So essentially Apache Kafka is implementation of this distributed log data structure that provides ability to capture these events and uh, store those events and replay those events for processing. Um, why it is important? If you ever look to implementation of the common data databases, uh, databases will have all this conception of uh, transaction log when they capture all events that happen with your data. And after that, uh, database uh, management system will materialize the table as a views and some things like that. So databases fundamentally use this log. So they, um, if we will tap into this transaction log, we can actually capture this special type of events that we call change data capture events. In this case, we can um, implement replication of, for databases, for example, the way how the, the tools that does, that do a replication of databases is actually just uh, listening transaction log of databases. All right, so uh, to illustrate how this looked like, again, all events go into the end of the file, um, and uh, we're reading this from the beginning of the file. So over the time, we're populating the stream of events. We have uh, two types of events, red events and yellow events. Now we want to start processing those events. And what does it mean, processing? So for example, we want to apply some sort of function, like we want to apply the predicate here and can say, hey, I want, I'm interested only in red events here. So what I can do? So I will be reading the stream of events uh, message by message, and after that, we'll be checking if there is a property in this event saying that, hey, I'm red or I'm yellow. If it's red, I will uh, pass this to another stream. If it's yellow, I will just skip it. The way how to describe this, you can use any uh, language. Uh, the, I'm a, have a Java background, uh, and I do have a, like, I wrote a lot of like a Java code. Uh, and in order to write this, I will use probably Kafka uh, consumer. We'll read the message, and after that, we'll deserialize the message and figure out what's the uh, Java object is there, and if it has a property of uh, red. And after that, I will do some if statement. Um, some people uh, prefer different languages while we're developing some of the stream processing tools at Confluent. We figured out that there are a lot of people who want to use stream processing uh, tools. They're not programmers. They want to do something with this data, but they don't really need to know what's the, I don't know, Scala, for example, or, or Kotlin, or whatnot, or, or Python. Uh, probably data engineers, you probably know what Python is, right? OK, cool. <laughs> So at least here. So we decide to, um, to implement something that people kind of sort of know what it is. So uh, we decide to go with the SQL approach. So in this case, majority of the people understand how it works. So essentially, this is how we want people to program their stream processing applications using this SQL-like approach. So in this case, this is where you apply your predicate. You check in if there's a property of this particular event has this property color. Um, and after that, uh, we will read everything from uh, initial stream. And we're creating another stream that we called uh, widgets red. So this is this concept that. Um, that we use, we're going to be operating around this kind of concepts. We have a streams of events that come in into the system, and we derive another or another few of the streams that will be um, that will be used there. Now, uh, so in order this to work, Kafka will be source system. Key SQL is designed to work with Kafka and uh, reading data from Kafka and writing data to Kafka. In order to integrate with other systems, we're using this part of Apache Kafka called Kafka Connect. About uh, integrations, I will talk a little bit in a, um, in a couple more slides. So essentially, if you want to bring your database, you need to bring this database to Kafka somehow, which is uh, Kafka Connect will help you to do with this. Um, apart from the being the source for data and the, and the destination for data from KSQL, KSQL also uses Kafka as an intermediate storage. So Kafka um, and KSQL, they only use 
each other. So you don't need to bring another like a database system in order to uh, key SQL to work, for example, to store intermediate state for some stateful string processing operations. Um, and the key SQL allows you to actually develop full blown applications using uh, key SQL language, which is extension of uh, this traditional uh, SQL language. All right, so how are we going to be interacting with the key SQL? So, uh, we do have a bunch of UIs at Confluent. We develop tools for stream processing, for interacting with Apache Kafka. We have this uh, awesome tool called Confluent Control Center. Um, it's free for development. You can grab this. It's uh, free. Uh, you can run this on your laptop and start writing this stuff. Um, we do have same UI in, uh, in our Confluent Cloud offering. Um, but like we're real data engineers. We work with console, right? Or we're using UIs. Who's using UI? It's a no shame place. I'm just asking. I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> I love UIs. I love good UIs. But uh, the console works uh, was awesome. I will be using this uh, the Confluent um, uh, Confluent. Sorry, uh, Key SQL CLI. Key SQL CLI is just a uh, just a tool that allows me typing two commands into this black screen. But essentially, what does what does it use under covers is actually use this REST API. So Key SQL represents the way how you can interact with Key SQL on a low level. It just can uh, use this uh, REST API. That's it. You can write your JavaScript application that will continue to write data um, and read data to Key SQL and get the result in a streaming fashion. In um, uh, I believe it's uh, just uh, like a um, continuous uh, continuous query, which is like a log polling type of type of thing. So uh, and Key SQL supports naturally uh, JSON out of the box, so you can you know easily write some of the tools for JavaScript. So three things: UI, uh, CLI, and uh, REST interface. So a uh, couple use cases I will before I will bring to demo um, how you can use Key SQL to do stuff. So uh, this simple as possible thing that is a part of the or the subset of stream processing tool that we call stateless stream processing is a filtering, right? You have a, a stream of events, you need to create another stream of event that doesn't have certain fields, or maybe does have certain fields. The way how, how I say about things, I start with negative, so doesn't have, meaning that um, I have a certain uh, nationality, so, and uh, we Russians always uh, think about the, the negative things first. So doesn't have certain things or does have certain things. All right, so the way how we can do this, um, you can do this with particular query. So we have a stream of the orders that comes from New York, uh, that comes from everywhere, and we want to create only orders that have uh, New York State as an address. So a couple interesting things that you can see here. So first of all, uh, we have this interesting construct that allows us also traverse into uh, some sort of uh, data structure. We have an object address that has a field street. We also can use this kind of um, syntax to traverse and find this. So we can operate with the uh, tree-like structures that we have in JSON. So it's very, uh, very convenient. And uh, this is what result look like. So um, this is what our object, this is how this object look like in the, at the very beginning. So it's like uh, just like this. So we do have a we do have this uh, object about orders, and we have an address as another uh, the nested object. So using the syntax, we can also traverse inside. But what, what also what we can do, we actually can um, uh, do some sort of like a modification on the on the fly. So we have some information about when this message was inserted. Uh, that will generate this uh, system level uh, a property called row time. That will register when the time was like the register time when this uh, message was inserted into um, into Kafka, and we can use this uh, function called time uh, timestamp to string that allows it to uh, perform some sort of formatting. So, on the as a result, uh, some of the uh, some of these um, messages we, uh, on the on the result stream, we actually have so, some sort of like a modification and uh, changing some of it on the fly. So. Um, Another uh, very interesting use case, uh, when you need to flatten the same, same structure. So we have this structure that has embedded objects, same uh, the order data. And this order data has address data. And now we can only extract some of the um, information about these orders. And we will have a flattened structure. If our consumer, the, someone who is interested in this result in the flattened format, will expect this. Um, 
So uh, next thing is that uh, we can mod modify the way how the data is uh, serialized or stored inside, uh, inside the Kafka and how the key SQL trading this. So by default, uh, it has a three formats supported. Uh, it's a delimited, uh, JSON, and Avro. Uh, how many of you heard about Avro? OK, nice. How many of you heard about comma separated text? How many of you came from the financial industry and know this is the most loved enterprise format? Now I'm, see, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I'm trying to be positive here, not most hated, <laughs> but most loved. Yeah, so uh, we do have to support this uh, out of the box. So if you have a data that comes in JSON, uh, it can be transferred into a, a text delimited um, format like this. Or you can do vice versa. So the, this kind of like a changes from the JSON to Avra also can be done um, very quickly and just the changing the value format. So in this case, we're just having uh, creating new stream uh, and we're specifying this with clause that allows us to manipulate data format, allows us to manipulate the Kafka topic uh, structure. We can define number of partitions. We can define now replication factors so far and so on, because. Underlying stuff. So things when we do create uh, create the stream, we actually create um, Kafka topic. We're actually creating some sort of storage on the Kafka side. So they 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 not ephemeral. All right. So. Um, now, we talk a little bit about the things that allows us to modify the current message. So we do some transformation. We do some filtering. Now. It's called a stateless stream processing. You don't need to know the previous result in order to calculate current result. Um, if you need to calculate uh, some of the results that require some information from the past, you do counting, you do aggregation, you do some sort of grouping, you do some sort of joins, uh, this is what we call stateful stream processing. In this case, the state, intermediate, res uh, intermediate state needs to be handled somewhere. So KSQL has built-in mechanism to, uh, to provide this uh, facility for you, so you don't need to think about this yourself underlying. Uh, mechanisms also will be Kafka. Some some of the state stores uh, that uh, KSQL will have in memory on on the processor side of KSQL will be replicated through Kafka as well. So here's an example how we can do uh, like enrichment type of procedure. So we do have some information about orders that already uh, somehow uh, appeared in Kafka topic. So maybe we have this information in our enterprise database, and this information was uh, replicated to Kafka. So we can uh, materialize it as a table uh, inside um, inside the key SQL. Key SQL operates with two things: tables and streams. Streams is the uh, sequence of events. Table represents a state. Think about this. If you play in chess, how many of you play in chess here? If you play in the chess and your partner, you don't trust your partners, you, what, you, what you do? You record all moves. When you're recording all moves, you're generating stream of events that represents a particular move. If you uh, look into this particular uh, the chess uh, board and how the figures are positioned on this board, you know the state. So if you will replay this particular stream of events, you always will get the current state on individual time. So this is how we transform uh, stream of events into table. Table represents state, uh, stream represents history. So here we go, Tame, table versus streams in uh, 20 seconds. Um, now, we have a table that represents order, which is going to be our lookup. We need to enrich our incoming stream of events, and we perform in so-called uh, uh, stream to table join. So we're performing this similar way how we can do uh, with uh, traditional um, traditional database joins. Uh, and we uh, we interested in this particular case. We're interested in um, uh, enriching this order that has an item ID where we can look up by item ID in the table that will have all this data. And after that, we will produce result that will include enriched stream, uh, enriched based on this uh, table data. So this is how it uh, result look like. So uh, in this particular case, we see um, some elements that came from our lookup table and some elements that came in real time in stream. So how we can integrate with external systems? So uh, by the time when the Kafka becomes very popular, people start thinking how we can do this. Uh, people start writing small apps every time when they do, um, I don't know, like they do like Oracle, 
uh, communication, they do MongoDB, and they start writing small apps. Instead of writing these small apps, uh, Kafka community come up with a framework called Kafka Connect that allows people to develop connectors so you can build your pipelines without bringing uh, much of the coding. So in this case, there's a Kafka Connect connector for Elasticsearch that allows you to do some stuff with KSQL, and after that, this connector will automatically dump this into Elastic. You'll have a very nice uh, visualization there using Kibana and some, some other stuff. Uh, you can perform certain aggregation. We do include certain uh, aggregating functions that allows you to do things like count. Uh, so we do include this, uh, the function out of the box. Uh, there is a multiple uh, functions that are available. You can uh, write your own aggregating functions as well. So this is how the, the result for a particular key would look like. A um, couple interesting use cases. So sometimes uh, we want to transform the stream. So we, we want to uh, not perform join, but perform rather merge or like a, how you can do like a zip join or that type of thing. So we have a two streams that comes different orders that coming from uh, say the New York and uh, like US and UK. And we want to have a, for some reasons, we want to have a stream that has all orders. We don't need to do joins. They will be just uh, um, joined the way how they will arrive. So in this case, there's nothing to do with order and, and how they will appear. All right, uh, you can do similar, uh, similar operation if you do um, kind of splitting. We've seen this already in the past. And I think that we're ready for some, some demo, right? Right, uh, you prepare your tweeters. All right, so what's gonna be, uh, what is gonna be? So in that, uh, this is here, here I'm running my um, uh, KSQL. This is my cluster that has uh, multiple Kafkas, uh, multiple uh, zookeepers. How you can tell if uh, some of the, the projects actually related to uh, big data somehow? It has a zookeeper as a dependency. Some people actually, uh, there's another version, people saying it has a patch in his name. Yeah, probably. Uh, but like if, uh, if you're dealing with some big data project, probably zookeeper somewhere there. Um, interesting thing here. I'm using this thing called a Twitter uh, connector that simply sits there and listening all the events that happened on the Twitter Firehost for a particular keyword. You know this keyword, right? Data. The data council, all right. So we're using this hashtag to, 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 to do some of the, um, some, uh, some stuff. So Kafka allows me not only to listen to some of the real time events. So for example, if I'll do select, um, wait, what? Uh, connection refused. Okay, let me see if I uh, need to reconnect to my, this is what I'm saying, yeah. The um, demos always, uh, always break. Let me reconnect. Okay, all right, so we see if uh, the Wi-Fi is working. We have here, let's see. So um, now you can tweet with Data Console and we'll be using my, um, the uh, Twitter handle if you want to your tweet appear. I'm not gonna wait because I'm gonna be do what all Russian people are known of doing, um, creating a bunch of uh, fake Twitter accounts. Um, <laughs> And I will go here, just switching to my uh, friend's Kafka account. And let me see, uh, data, data console. Uh, okay, this guy is uh, on. Let's do um, important thing, yay. Let's see if KSQL supports uh, emojis. Uh-huh, uh -huh. so the, the tweet goes, here. okay. So I think we'll have a good round of applause that at least our premise works for demo. We still have five minutes to do some cool stuff. So what I usually do um, in this kind of setting, uh, I also can do is to um, set, I can reset this offset. So I'm meaning that my application, my KSQL query, can actually query the data that's already in Kafka topic. So in this case, I reset my offset. If I run this select, it actually will bring all the queries from, uh, I guess, from yesterday when I was testing this thing, and also will display this on the screen, and will continue to uh, reading this data um, as it goes here. So it says, uh, press Control C to interrupt. So meaning that I will be running here is um, continuous query. So in this case, when I will done with this, I will just kill it. I'll just control C. So done, my query is done. So 
in order me to create a persistent query so I can, you know, just like close the laptop and continue uh, do my stuff and my KSQL will do things for me. Um, so let me switch back here. Uh, okay, so what I will do here. Uh, okay, this is my tweet. We already seen this. Number five, okay. Um, I can perform certain uh, certain uh, aggregated uh, aggregated calculations. So in this particular case, um, I will be interested in uh, getting a tweet count. Uh, this is user tweet count for um, for a specific time frame. So KSQL has this capability that allows you to perform uh, finite uh, operations on infinite stream of data. So in this particular case, uh, the I don't know when the, all these tweets will stop coming, right? I, I'm assuming that you're still tweeting and like they keep coming, but I'm interesting on oh, tweets for the last hour because this was where my presentation was and I'm interested in how the people reacted this one. So I created this one um, within hour that allows me to have this uh, state. So as you can see here, I'm creating a table because I'm trying to do aggregated result and I don't care about history. So I'm just interested in, in, uh, in counts. So uh, what I can do, uh, I can also create some um, uh, pretty print version. So in this case, I will extract my raw time. Well, that will be defining my when the window started. Um, I will be uh, able to see, say, let's do two, not the three, right? Um, so not everyone wants to tweet, maybe, but uh, uh, and I will do something like here, and uh, right now. I need to tweet more, or my alter ego needs to tweet more. So, uh, do, do, do. and okay, uh, is uh, is uh, K SQL is awesome. Let's do one because um, Twitter will not allow me to place duplicates. Uh, so, in this case, I'll do two and the three. And I should be able to see uh, who's tweeting about who's tweeting and who's on fire here. Okay, so as you can see here, so what happened, my tweet went to internet, Twitter gave me this result, and now I'm constantly quitting this aggregated state with a couple lines of SQL code or SQL line code. All right, so uh, operation and deployment. KSQL is a uh, Java process, um, but uh, you can deploy this in uh, any package that you would like. It has a packages for, for Linux, it has a Dockers. Uh, my particular demo runs in Kubernetes um, and uh, just, uh, just continuously running there. Uh, I, I can, I can uh, scale my KSQL as I need to, because, and I can scale this independently from my Kafka, because it depends on the certain use cases that I'm using. Um, we also have uh, KSQL in the cloud if you're interested in full-blown, let me just bring more and more um, uh, the buzzwords, like full-blown, serverless, cloud-native, uh, stream processing, functionality. So basically you can run KSQL in cloud, you can run Kafka in cloud, you can run connectors in cloud. So you don't need to run this stuff for yourself. You can run this just to submit your KSQL query and you'll be good to go. Um, you can operate with the UI, uh, you can operate this with the uh, CLI, you can operate this using the REST interface. Uh, they, uh, KSQL can be deployed on a different host, it's supposed to be deployed on different hosts than Kafka, because we usually not recommend anyone's runs uh, near to Kafka, and still they talk to each other through the network. Uh, there's an interesting mode that allows you to deploy this in production, that's called headless mode, that allows you to write your uh, stream processing application in SQL file, ship this SQL file into, um, into KSQL and uh, lock down um, this environment. So you're writing your app in SQL. Uh, KSQL is not like your database. You're not running KSQL for everything, even though you can. Uh, so usual use case is that, uh, that there's no like a one size fits all. You can use these different sizes for different use cases. Uh, if you do like a simple, um, simple type of like a filtering uh, or simple like a generalization of the data, you can run this with like 
one instance here, right? So we have one instance of KSQL. Uh, we're running more sophisticated uh, use case, for example, some fraud detection. We're running this with the two instances, and we're running some sort of like a very heavy um, aggregation type of thing. Uh, we will be running this in uh, more nodes. Um, the control center provides monitoring capabilities. We expose all the metrics from KSQL through JMX. So essentially, any tool that understands JMX will be able to use it. Now, that brings us to the great idea that the founders of the Kafka had in mind when they developed this in the. Um, in LinkedIn, that all streams lead to Kafka, uh, event streaming platform, and the key sequel is a kind of first horseman of this uh, of this era. Now, uh, what about databases? How, how about the stuff that we actually, you know, getting data from legacy system, existing system, and things like that? So. We do have all these connectors uh, already available. If you do the Confluent IO slash hub, you can find the, the app store for connectors that we call it. Uh, it's a Confluent hub. Uh, you can find any connector. Now, what we're actually doing, we're actually creating this boundary that allow, requires you as a data engineer to you know, bring these connector frameworks in it. You need to understand how to configure this. Now you can do this within KSQL. KSQL will be able to create the connectors, so the data will be constantly pumping from your database or be constantly out, uh, you know, constantly reading to some sort of this, uh, source. So that allows you to create this, this connector. Also, um, uh, it's a uh, clip, KSQL improvement proposal number seven, and KSQL improvement proposal number eight is actually allows to query KSQL the way how you can query your traditional database in order to get what we call the pool queries. So you will get a state, um, and you can use KSQL as your database. You don't need to actually dump data anywhere. So you can follow the process of, uh, of development of KSQL here. Um, thank you so much for being with me. We have a Slack community. If you not enough with uh, 10 or 15 Slacks that you already have probably, please join our Slack as well. We do have a, a group where the people talking about KSQL, people talking about Kafka stream processing, Kubernetes. I'm hanging out in the Kubernetes channel sometimes. So uh, thank you for, uh, for your time. Uh, if you don't have a Twitter and you didn't create a Twitter during this presentation, you can send me email. Email. How many of you have uh, emails? <laughs> send me email. So basically, thank you so much for your time, and uh, I will be available for enhanced interrogation in the separate room, as well as as as, as way I was told. Thank you so much. Victor, the first uh, question that I suppose. Uh, the most important for uh, developers. Uh, it's okay about filtering uh, incoming events, yeah? And uh, uh, joins is uh, quite tricky. What about performance? Isn't it uh, easy uh, in case of performance, collect all the data on the database side and perform joins uh, via temporary tables or all the... This is how you can find the Russian person in the room because the first question would be about performance. This is this is this is perfect uh, question. So uh, in order to uh, answer this question, there's a couple of things. So we're not joining all this massive amount of data in one shot. It's not like your traditional uh, join that you do when you need to have a uh, data already available in the both sides. It's actually what you're joining is um, is uh, just a few messages that comes into into your stream. So you might have some sort of data that already aggregated, which means that uh, you already stored it somewhere. So it's not about joining in this case. It's about more storage and how much memory it will use. Um, the uh, the performance wise, it still relies on on the like high performance libraries like uh, Kafka Streams and the uh, consumer and producer API. So all this the good thing about Kafka, you can tweak everything. Bad thing about Kafka, you need to tweak things. Um, and uh, in order to answer about performance, because it's a really vague question, so I need to know the answers for some questions like what's your size of the messages, what's the what's the ratio, how messages arrive. KSQL does support uh, the metrics. It will expose like when you do this kind of join, you will do if we'll have a time. I can show you this in. Um, in our uh, the office hours, I can show you that you can see the, how many messages go through this uh, particular query, what's the performance of this query. This information is available in order to you to observe this, introspect, and make some sort of decision. So in general, it works very well. We do have a lot of customers who are using this already in production workloads, and they're using a serious amount of data to you know, pumping through KSQL. And again, 
you can scale things up uh, if you will see there's some sort of like limitation in terms of how the data will you know, go through. Uh, it doesn't do any remote joining. Data will be collocated based on partition scheme, but in this case, we need to a little bit more time to talk about how the, uh, the scalability thing works inside the Kafka. But in general, uh, the performance very well, numbers are there. You can always measure yourself. If you can't measure, you can't control it. So 